talking about Motorsport UK, uh, I'm in the way of the sign. Look, there it is. I'm with Jess Runnicles. Jess has just been on the panel and been questioned and interviewed uh, by Chris, Chris Hugel. Yes. Um, and so, so Jess, what are you doing here? Explain to everybody why Motorsport UK are here at this Racing Pride event. Sure, so Motorsport UK is the governing body in the UK, so we, we govern the sport in the UK, given the power by the FIA. Um, I'm the head of sustainability, so I spend half my time looking at environmental sustainability and half my time looking at inclusion. And ultimately, we want the sport to be more diverse and inclusive. Um, we have four key areas. So we look at women in motorsport, uh, we look at racial diversity, disability and accessibility, and LGBTQ+. And I think it's just important that we're visible at these events, showing what we're doing, talking about what we're doing, and interacting with the community to see what they want. Okay, so what exactly are you doing currently regarding uh LGBTQ and, and Pride, Racing Pride, which is why we're here. Yeah, so we've worked a lot of Racing Pride. We've done a few things. One is we created an education module. So all of our clubs have a free to access education module. And that's kind of like if they're too embarrassed to ask some questions to their friends or their family, it puts it all in one place, how to deal with different situations, what language is acceptable. Um, we did Pride last year, which we're really proud to. We did Oxford Pride. That was more of an internal activity and got all our colleagues out, which was a really fun day. We did a lot of webinars, just kind of explaining to the community what they could do for Pride, so hopefully we have a bigger impact than just us. Um, and then we're really proud that last year we launched our trans inclusion policy, which was quite a big step for us, which wasn't new news, so we didn't do anything different, but we just put how we how we kind of process trans licenses into a proper document and put that into the public domain, just to be very, very clear and explicit that trans people are very welcome in our sport. Okay, so what differences, maybe you don't have to go through the whole whole thing, but what sort of differences are you looking at that went into that policy compared to a, a policy that existed before? So I think the issue was is that there wasn't a policy before, so all the rules are exactly the same. We're a mixed gender sport, so all genders can compete side by side. It doesn't matter what your gender identity is, but we kind of assumed that people knew that and felt comfortable but then we got feedback from the community that actually if we were more explicit about that and communicated that in a more succinct way, people would feel more welcome. So that's really what it was. It was putting down what we already do into a piece of paper and just being like, here, like, see ya. Here, here. <laughs> here it is. Here are our words. How do you feel that that, that sort of goes, that, that will go down very well with the LGBTQ plus community? Absolutely. Yeah. How do you feel that go, goes into the regular motorsport community? Yeah, and like we got really good feedback from within the community, so that was really nice. Um, and also, I think if they've already got a trans person in their club or competing in their championship, it's probably no different. So they'll carry on as normal. What we wanted to do is give that kind of guidance and advice for clubs if they if they had a, a trans person wanting to join their events or coming to their club, that they had some support from us. And that's what we'll be growing is kind of our like our guidance on how to support trans people within the community. Um, but yeah, we were really lucky that we got really good response. And also we're really clear that like that policy is a one-page document, so it doesn't answer everything, but get in touch if you do have questions and we can just chat about it. Yeah, absolutely. Do you feel that this policy then will encourage people that maybe have, have been under the radar and, and living quite sort of a private life? It will just give them a little bit more breathing space to, to be yeah. themselves and maybe say something out loud to people. That is, that's definitely my hope. I think there's so many different factors that come into someone deciding to come out or to transition. And we just don't want to be one of those barriers. Yeah. So we want to make it something that you don't have to consider when making decisions. So yeah. hopefully like that was the intent, was to make people feel included. Now, Team Brit are here, and I have spoken with Angie from Team Brit uh, on camera and also Mike off camera. And I myself have a disability. Um, and so obviously Motorsport UK are obviously being inclusive, as you said, of mm -hmm. disability as well. One of the, the things that uh, Angie and I discussed was accessibility to circuits and to mm -hmm. tracks and also in, including even parking, blue yep. badge parking and being able to park closer to, to the buildings. And, and yes, there's an element of wanting to be treated equally with everybody else. So, you know, parking the car park with everybody else. But then there's also the element of needing that reason the reasonable yeah. adjustment yeah. side. Is that going to kind of be a bit more obvious or is it going to be worked on uh, circuits changing, making it more accessible for either drivers or, or journalists, you know, that have disabilities? So we, 
we kind of have hundreds of different venues, some circuits, some non-fixed venues, some hill climb venues, karting tracks. And actually that has been a question that I'm being asked quite a lot recently. So last year we start, started partnering with an organisation called Nimbus Disability. They run the Access Card programme um, and they're kind of experts in, in accessible spaces. Um, and we brought them into the world of motorsport. So they're really amazing. They do music venues and they do theme parks, but they yeah. didn't necessarily hadn't been to a motorsport yeah, event yeah, before. Yeah. I have an access card. Oh, amazing. Yeah. So I know, I know. So, you were yeah, I know. so we work. So we took them to a couple of different venues, walked them around, and kind of did what we called a health check, which was basically just seeing like what is available for people, what could be better. Um, and we learned a lot from that. We went back and we actually realised that we should broaden our scope. So we looked initially just at spectators, but actually we should look for spectators, for volunteers and officials um, and competitors as well. And we don't directly own our venues. So what we kind of say is, like, let, can we help? Can we get all of the good practice from different venues and then share it with other venues? Um, can we create some guidance or some help sheets in terms of that kind of work? So we have a survey live at the moment. It will be live for the next week on anyone oh. with any disability to, to fill in and to be like what they would like from venues, circuits, not um, non-fixed venues, um, all of our venues, what works, what doesn't work, um, what you'd like us to do, how's the communications. Um, off the back of that, we'll do some focus groups just to hear a bit more. And then from that, we'll create um, or create some guidance for all of our venues, but also go back out to some of the venues and help them more one-on-one. -on -one. So I think that's our kind of Motorsport UK's role, is to <laughs> help. Um, and that's what we're in the middle of doing, so we should be doing that throughout the whole of this year. So yeah, yeah that's if anyone wants to fill in that survey, it'll be really helpful. Yeah, that would be absolutely amazing, because I'm going to fill it in as well, uh, for sure. The absolutely phenomenal job that you're doing, I'm led to believe. I've been spoken in my ear. Um, so uh, it, it's really great to, to see somebody like you that's very passionate and that absolutely wants to make the change happen, no matter which of those tick boxes that anybody feels that they, they, they are going to tick. Because some people are ticking multiple ones, as, as, we've, seen, earlier, yeah. as we've seen today. Um, and this is a closed event today. Um, but hopefully in the future there will be open events and there will be events maybe that, that you know we could, Motorsport UK um, you know either still get involved in or maybe host themselves um, and you know let's let's get this awareness going shall yeah, we? Yeah it's really nice everyone, how comfortable everyone's felt with sharing today and I think that is like what events like this are for it's for creating safe space for the people that are in like all on board we're all in the same space we want to help to hear and then what we can definitely do is take that message wider and kind of share people's stories, not necessarily showing who they are, <laughs> but like using that as a way to communicate what needs to change or what works or what doesn't work. Okay. Oh, that's wonderful. Thank you so much, that's Jess. Right. It's been lovely to meet you and, um, you know, good luck. Yeah, fill in the survey. Thank you. <laughs> fill in the survey. She's yeah. right. <laughs>